we should like if we actually do these a lot we should just um keep score you know what do you mean keep score like like score the teams oh yeah well it's different people we have the same people but on different teams welcome everybody we're back i'm here with my co-commentator uh, Brett, and I don't I don't mean that I'm the commentator and he's the co-host. I mean like we're both co-commentators. Yes, just like The Office. <laughs> I don't... Dun, Dun, Dunder Mifflin. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're co-bosses. Yeah. Uh, so... I told that joke before and uh, Justin begrudgingly laughed because he, he thought I was an idiot, but he didn't really know what it meant. Well, I thought it was a funny <laughs> joke. The problem is now we've had to say it again and it's awkward <laughs> for both of us because we both know what we were going to say, but we had to scrap the recording and start again because these stupid fucking people in this game... Ugh. Ugh, I don't idiots. Even yeah, they're just stupid. All idiots. All right. If you watched our previous commentated match, you'll know that these guys are just dumb. <laughs> it's a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I mean, but just... we'd probably all be better off if they were all just dead. Yeah, yeah, you said it. Absolutely. You said it, Justin. Uh, let's get back into this game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've got some instant pick heroes here because they already knew who they were going to play, and when they had to restart the match, they all decided, same hero. So we'll do some, uh, some introductions with the players when we get started right about now. Yeah. Now. Oh. Now. Now, okay. So on the dire side, we've got Harmonic Deviant coming in with Nature's Prophet, who's got a little mushroom on his head, and he's a he's a real annoying uh, the little, tree, tree, the little tree guy. And uh, Big Byron playing Death Prophet again. What I like about this match is that everybody is playing a different hero except Big Byron. It's <laughs> uh, well put, well put. Right, and mid, we're going to have Kali Ma going Storm Spirit, who does not do a huge amount of damage, but is incredibly annoying with the amount of lockdown that he can, that he can use on the opponent's team. And we've got uh, Dan... Uh, uh, a guy named Browner. <laughs> I almost said his full name. <laughs> We've got Browner here going Pugna. So he's he's a, a strange hero. We can kind of explain it, and I have a feeling that Kunkka in his lane is going to be a little frustrated with him here and there. Seconds. And uh, did I miss anyone? I think that's uh, I think that's the dire side. Yeah, it looks like they actually have a Kurt here this time as well. Ah, <laughs> oh, you got Kunkka. Yeah, you said Kaipo. I mean, <laughs> I just saw Skypo in the little chat. Ah, so on the radiant side, we've got the uh, the cool Zeus hanging out at mid. I for some reason can't click on him. Hey, the same thing is happening to me that is happening to you. Yeah, that was a uh, game. Zeus has no yeah, items. Really he must be rushing a bottle, which is a bad excuse of a thing. Got Mr. Witch Doctor. The Doctor is in somewhere on this map. He's bottom. There he is at bottom. We've got Bloodseeker in lane with him, getting some support. We've got Enigma hanging in the jungle, looking like she's going to deny an early creep. And we've also got Bounty Hunter in the off lane, benefiting from that extra experience and a little extra gold once he gets that level 6 with the track. Right, so Bounty Hunter works really well solo off lane because he has a very good escape, which allows him to go invisible. So Bounty Hunter is very reliant on getting early feed, meaning a lot of money early and a lot of early experience. So him being alone in this lane allows him to get pretty much double the experience because when you have two heroes in a lane, the experience is actually split. So Bounty Hunter's by himself, and he's able to do this because if he's close to dying, he can just use invis and escape. Yeah, he's a he's a tough hero to match up against. Uh, he does a lot of burst damage, and you know his invisibility is really can be crippling. And facing him in a one v one actually might might hurt more than it'll help. Right. The thing about Death Prophet though is she has that nuke that we talked about last that last match, that Crypt Swarm that allows her to shoot it in any direction, and it will hit Bounty Hunter uh, even if he's invisible because you don't have to click on Bounty Hunter to use it. So if uh, if Big Byron can use that effectively, well, there is one. It's not doing a lot of damage at, uh, at level 1, unfortunately, but he could use that to finish up Bounty Hunter if Bounty Hunter is low and using Viz to escape. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll notice I'm a little nervous for this Nature's Prophet. He's very low in the jungle, and with Bloodseeker's passive, they can they can see his every move. So does, it's, um, it's a little scary. Does Bloodseeker have it? He does not. Oh, he did not get it. He uh, should be getting it. Just, just in a second here. Right. Another 100 experience, but we'll, we'll see. So Bloodseeker has a passive here called Thirst, which allows him to see heroes that are below a certain threshold of health. And basically, the, the more points he has into it, the higher uh, the enemy health can be for him to be able to see them. And because that they have a, they have a jungler on their team, oh, they leave this side. Like, oh, there is First Blood. Wow. wow. Level 2 must have come out just then because... There it is. He's got it. There it is. Yep. So that... Putting a point that immediately revealed uh, Nature's Prophet, which allowed Zeus to just run in that jungle and kill him pretty much instantly. What a shame. <laughs> just a shame. I mean, this. I mean, I think we've lost a real great hero today. And yeah, maybe you know, we can just we'll... take a moment and say a, a quick prayer. And... <laughs> <laughs> He's joking. <laughs> Why would we do that? God. 
So bottom here, let's talk about this hero matchup. This is going to be real interesting. We've talked about Bloodseeker a little bit, um, that ultimate allowing to see people who are, are, are low health. Now, uh, his carry, or I'm sorry, his support in this lane is Witch Doctor, who's a real Stand interesting hero. Oh. <laughs> I thought we were calling him out, you know, taking a little jab. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! No, he's got a, a stun that bounces. The thing is, is um, pretty much it's an un I'd call it an unreliable stun, because unless it can bounce between multiple enemy units, it's not that effective of a stun. It only lasts for about a half a second, but the idea is it hits them, it bounces to something else, and then bounces back to that same person, keeping them perpetually stunned. But if you can't make that happen, it, it, it's not really that good of a stun. Yeah, it's... You know, I think it's a nice stun um, in the right situations, but, I mean, like like many of the skills in this game, it's very situational, and Absolutely. you don't want, you don't want to use it if there's a ton of creeps around. But it, I'm, not, I'm not sure what speckles means, but uh, it looks like we're going to need a pause due to speckles. <laughs> speckles, please. Well, hey, we could talk about the Pugna Kunkka lineup. I, I really think that Pugna... I don't know, it really depends on how he plays, but he can really cause a problem for his own teammate here. For some reason, when I click heroes in this spectator mode, it just really, really does not work. That happened to... <laughs> in the slightest. <laughs> it, it, that, you know, that happened to me uh, last game. I think it has to do with who's um, the official camera controller, because... Well, I'm I think, sure it's me. Yeah, and last game it was me, and I couldn't click them. So I think if Boy. you're the official camera mover, you can't click heroes, which makes absolutely no sense at all. Let me, I'm gonna go into my settings real quick and see if see if I can figure something out. You know, you go ahead and do that, Brett, and I'll awkwardly fill this silence by by myself while the game is paused. Is is paused because Storm Spirit felt the need to waste uh, nine other people's time, uh, eleven people's uh, time actually. Yeah, you so, know, what? And, and fuck fuck him for that, and uh, we hate him. <laughs> Absolutely. So we talked about this last game, but Pugna's got this ability here called Decrepify. Now, what it does is. It kind of turns the, the other unit green. You can actually cast it on, on your own allied heroes, too, and it makes them immune to physical damage, which is pretty much every hero's right-click ability. When you right-click something, they do a physical attack. So when you decrepify an enemy or yourself, it makes them immune mm -hmm. to that right-click. But the idea is it, it increases the amount of magical damage they take. So Pugna uh, will cast decrepify and then this nether blast or uh, this life drain. Those are both magical abilities, and it will do increased damage. The problem is, if Kunkka is about to kill someone with his normal right-click swing, and Pugna shambles in and uses Decrepify because he's an asshole or a bad player, uh, then Kunkka's going to be denied that kill, and that person actually might get away if Pugna cannot finish them off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a scary thing. It's it's, 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 find anything in the settings? No. <laughs> it's weird. It sucks. Yeah, so I guess uh, whoever's watching this won't be able to see, uh, see anything you mouse over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I gotta keep. I want to keep an eye on this Nature's Prophet again. He's almost down to half health, and if he goes below, well, let's see. Where's 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 life? Where's Bloodseeker? So True Sight health, twenty-five percent. Visibility health, fifty percent. So does that mean he can see them if they're um, if they're below fifty percent health? As far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, if they're invisible, like, for instance, if uh, Bounty Hunter was just above 25%, he could go invisible, and uh, True Sight would not be granted, but under 25%, he would be able to be seen even if he was invisible. Gotcha. Wow, I was mistaken earlier, so it doesn't level up with the amount of levels. What levels up is his uh, Bloodseeker's damage and movement speed, but mm -hmm. uh, not the not the percentage. So fi anyone below 50%, Bloodseeker can see, which really works well with Zeus, because Zeus has an ability that allows him to hit everybody on the map all at once. So if if he can see someone, so say Nature's Prophet's up here in the jungle, you know, dicking around with, you know, 25% hey. health. Wait. What happened? I think I just figured My it out. Left click on another hero. Gratitude. Okay. I'm on Death Prophet. Yep, you're in control of that. That's weird. Wait, you're the cameraman, I think. I must be the cameraman. You are the cameraman. You. I'm the cameraman! Piece of trash. <laughs> I am a piece of trash. This whole time I was taking it so seriously, now I can just... You just fumble around like an idiot now, and <laughs> nobody's gonna notice. I'm so sorry, Brett. I guess I'm just in complete control. <laughs> mm. Hey, so I want to point out, it would be very, very, very smart of Big Byron to get some sentry wards. I think he's solo landing, and, and that's not 
probably something he's not used to because he doesn't have to. He was kind of forced into it because uh, he had a Dick Nature's Prophet pick on his team, so he had to solo lane. <laughs> he needs to be buying his own wards, and against Bounty Hunter, that is absolutely crucial because Bounty Hunter, especially at level 6, will kill you. He'll go invisible, sneak up behind you, and kill you. So you need those sentry wards to see him. Yep. And uh, let's, let's, uh, uh, let's take a look at the gold graphs here. Gold Not graphs. a very big lead. Current gold. <laughs> Well, Zeus in a huge lead right now for Radiant. Illusion. Wow. What a hero. I know. What a hero. Let's, let's take a look at the uh, net worth, though. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good on, on his end. Yep, I mean, Zeus. Uh, uh, the thing about Zeus, though, is he's very ability dependent. He doesn't need that much farm. I think like his, his super luxury item is probably a refresher orb that allows him to use that ultimate ability that hits everything on the map twice. Oh, yeah. But other oh, than yeah. that, I, you know, I can't say maybe a Veil of Discord that makes people take more magic damage. But with a Pugna on your team, you have a single target Veil of Discord already. Yep. So yeah, Pug yeah, Pugna's interesting. By the way, Pugna's not on his team, he's on the other team. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm certain there will be things that the Pugna will be good good for. Yeah, always. <laughs> well, right? Right? the thing is, um, one thing that, that our friend uh, Gobbles here, who plays Pugna, likes to do is he decrepifies himself because he gets into a lot of uh, sticky situations where he's about to die, so he decrepifies himself to escape, and if this Pugna's doing that at all, it will allow Zeus to just absolutely annihilate him, because <laughs> yep. Zeus's main damage is all magic. Yes. Missing middle. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. There really isn't much right-click damage on their team either. Oh, oh we looks got another like pick Nature's up here Prophet for Nature's Prophet. Is just Ooh. die. Oh, absolutely. What a shame. So the dire side has this ward up on the, on the other side of the river that probably um, was able to see Nature's Prophet. I think Nature's was trying to get to the secret shop, and he really should have just uh, should have gone for his own or sent he the actually, courier. He placed a, uh, an observer ward up on that spot, um, and that's how he got picked off. And I'm, I'm thinking Zeus may have figured out that that, that was put there because uh, Zeus's lightning bolts um, grant true sight, his W. Right. If he would have seen it, though, I, he should have dewarded it. So I don't think he would have been able to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's looking that way, Chet. <laughs> so I guess that's just a recurring thing. You're gonna call me Chet <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> kind of a slow game going on here. I am excited to see this Enigma come out and maybe do some ganks. But now she's made herself uh, very clearly seen. So <laughs> yeah. I don't think anything big is gonna be happening down here. I think she's just waiting to deny a uh, friendly creep for some Eidolons, which will yeah, take away some of the experience from the enemies. Right. Which is pretty good. Okay. You know what I have to say? Oh, so we do have Big Byron who bought some uh, some sentries up here. Exactly we're, we're, what. Uh, they are in big trouble. Down at the bottom. Big oh, trouble down at the bottom. Radiant's going to get picked off here almost entirely. This is actually going to just completely even out the scoreboard. And look at that. Right, right like that. They are just evened up. 3 3. Well, that, uh, it was 2-3. The, the Zeus there on the Radiant side was able to clean up to, uh, one of the Dire side. That was uh, Zeus's ult that allowed him to hit people anywhere on the map. Yep. What a, what a time to be alive. <laughs> so I'm actually hoping to see a bit of a longer game than the last one. That was pretty much cleaned up by, uh, by Shadow Fiend. But hopefully this one goes on a little longer. It seems like people are more focused on their farm, though. Uh, might be a little boring if we don't see any ganks going on, though. Yeah, if, I, you know, I played some Nature's Prophet. I've been trying to get more effective with him because everybody hates it when I play Nature's Prophet. But what he really should be doing is synergizing with the team for those ganks. I mean, you can have a four-man gank um, at bottom at bottom, and then send your two heroes that came and ganked right back to their farming spots. Radiant like, immediately. It, there's basically no consequence to the... Uh, to the gank because you know for a mid to gank there's a lot of consequences involved you know you can miss out on the farm that you have at mid Radiant or maybe the other mid is going to come with you because they saw you you know right. it's basically incon inconsequential inconsequential well I, you know i completely agree with you we all hate it when you play nature's prophet <laughs> so death prophet popped her all top already taking down that top tower death prophet's all very powerful for pushing towers with the exorcism of those ghosts they do a lot of damage versus those towers yeah heavy pushers are a pretty good counter for bounty hunter it gets him out of the lane, and um, you know, taking a look at the uh, levels here, Bounty Hunter is sitting at level seven, while the Death Prophet's at level eight. So clearly, the experience is heavily in the Death Prophet's favor. Absolutely, and that's that's attacked. actually very good because now uh, Bounty Hunter does not have a safe lane uh, to to retreat to. He doesn't have a tower to stand under in order to get that farm. So Radiant's now he's effectively going to be farming, but I don't think he's quite high enough to do the damage he needs to do to be able to uh, to really pick people off right away. Mm-hmm. There is Pugna's life drain. Big play here. 
No black hole on the Enigma, so not really sure what's coming out there. Oh, looks like. Whew. If that was a very close call, I don't think either side really wanted to commit just yet. Yeah. The scores are close, the towers are close, nobody wants to really make a big move this early in the game. I think the Radiant needs to consistently either be buying Dust or Sentry Wards to put in, in the lanes, though, because that Bounty Hunter is going to be all over the place right now. And by Radiant, I meant Dire. The Dire needs to be laying Sentry Wards in all the lanes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So I guess let's talk about uh, Enigma's ultimate because these these teams are doing nothing interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Enigma's ultimate probably one of the most powerful in the game, and also has one of the longest cooldowns in the game. Um, sitting at 200 seconds at level one, and only goes down 20 seconds at 180 seconds at level three. But uh, what it what it essentially does is it completely stuns and disables um, as many enemy heroes as they can catch for a duration of time, four seconds, which is huge. I mean, the longest stun in the game is, what, five seconds? So, the ability to have an AoE, but it's incredibly hard to cast correctly. You need to get in the perfect position because you can be stunned out of it being a channeled that ability. But it's very tower. powerful if used correctly. Absolutely. We just had Nature's Prophet just barely escape from Bounty Hunter coming in on him. He must have seen him with an Observer Ward or something like that. Yeah, it looks like a very... <laughs> A very choice Observer Ward up in the top lane here on the stairs. <laughs> the thing about this Bounty Hunter is he's roaming around and he's not staying anywhere long enough to really get experience. He's not even leeching experience. He's not getting any last hits. He's he's really getting denied thoroughly here because his lane was taken very early. Yeah, it looks like that Null Talisman, it looks like he might be going for a Dagon. Early Dagon on Bounty Hunter does make sense. He's all about burst yeah. damage. Yeah, what oh, if Dagon wow. does uh, 400 burst damage? Big hit bottom. We did see an Enigma ult. I, caught, I got to it at the last second, but it was actually interrupted by Kunkka. Kunkka having an ability to stun this Torrent. It takes a few seconds to work, but it's a very large stun. And then he threw his ultimate, which was that giant boat that came in and killed Witch Doctor. <laughs> Accidental buyback out on uh, Enigma there. And... Oof. Oh, wow. And there was uh, Zeus's ultimate getting some vengeance on the Radiant side. This Pugna's very low. If uh, if anyone can see Radiant's him, they really should go for him. Bloodseeker should be able to see him. They know he's low, but with three, with two other teammates around, I don't think they're going to risk it. Bloodseeker's actually dead. Oh, well, no, so. they can't see him. Yeah. <laughs> the passive actually doesn't work when he's dead, believe it or not. Tonka having that Urn of Shadows being a very, very, very good early to mid-game healing item. Punk <laughs> Pugna's low again. Though again, he's kind of... Oh, and he's done. That was a big move by Bloodseeker. The finger should be laying on the S key when you're running from a Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker's ultimate, this rupture, pretty much you take damage dependent on how uh, how far you move. Yep, it's a life drain and every step you take is another, another part of life drained. We got Witch Doctor Enough. picked off by Storm Spirit there. Storm Spirit very good at ganking with his, able to, with his abilities to... Uh, to tie people down. Yeah, one of the best gankers in the game, I'd say. He's a very strong hero. Oh, and the Death Prophet is coming down. The ultimate's gone, but the tower goes down along with it. Dyer having a, a big uh, tower advantage here. Two towers up and uh, and two kills up. The kills, uh, that's something you can always catch up on. The thing about towers is once your tower's gone, it's gone, and that's a lot of money that Dyer has a lot earlier than Radiant does. That gives them even more of an advantage. I'm so nervous for them, Chet. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even sure which team I'm nervous for. I'm just so nervous. <laughs> so Enigma just used uh, his stun ability on an illusion there. So to the, to the other team, that illusion looked like a normal a normal player. We were just unable to see it. Is this Enigma going to make it out? Just barely. Oh. That made me nervous as well. Me too. Oh, oh so boy. Th there's a case where Bloodseeker alts. Kunkka's oh, running with an eye. Oh, and the boat does not Whoa, it does land. I'm getting my teams mixed up. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. The double kill comes out. And the beautiful ultimate. Oh, jeez. This side. is Radiant's comeback right here. Oh, that. just not being able to kill. There is the example of the situation in which the coconuts can be a very reliable stun. Absolutely. When you have two heroes right next to each other with no creeps, it's just going to bounce back between them forever. Yep. Now this nether ward here, that's uh, that's one of Pugna's abilities. I'm going to stop talking about that because we have more of a battle going on. Oh my goodness. Storm Spirit again this taking Storm down. Spirit. Yeah, just 
just wrecking on the ganks. You know, nobody's been ready for it. Nobody's standing under the towers. You know, they're just it's just a blood a blood fest. A fest bath. <laughs> a fest of a, a, a blood bath. Right. Fest. Now that storm spirit stun. I don't know. I would argue that's Boy. one of the best single targets. Black hole is up, trying to get it off, and she's dead. Oh my goodness! Wow. Huge. Wow. Huge move for Radiant. This is turned around. They killed that Enigma right away, but... What a turnaround from the Radiant side. That was beautiful. Almost had the Bloodseeker walking right into that boat trying to escape the, through the ship, but it's just not going to work that way, Bloodseeker. Right. Need Kunk to get out of there. Kunkka's ultimate, very difficult to land. It is that boat. Um, a lot of people like to initiate with it, but I think that's when it's the hardest to land. In my opinion, it would be better served to, sh to, to lay it down when... Uh, when the engagement's already happened, it'd be really good to throw it into an Enigma who's channeling Black Hole, for instance. Yeah, it's it's a big ability. It's uh, it's an ability that allows him to just kind of stay back, you know, with his with his Riptide, I think it's called, which is basically the cleave ability on his sword. Every five or four seconds, he allows his Tied. damage to travel through all the creeps and the heroes. Right. And so, uh, you know, he just doesn't need to get right into the battles. He can just kind of stay back to his thing. Shoot some boats, play some X's for some treasures, you know, he's just... Play <laughs> some X's for some treasures? <laughs> <laughs> Big thing about Kunkka, though, is all, pretty much every one of his abilities is uh, is a skill shot. I mean, the only one that's not is X marks the spot, which draws them back to the X after a couple oh. seconds, but then you have to lay a skill shot right after. This could oh, another be gank here by Storm Are we going to see the black huge. hole come out? Nope. Not that time. Oh, oh Bloodseeker! Oh, that is very, very good ability to use on the Storm Spirit. And he's dead. Perfect. Finally brought down, even though he was just killed not too long ago. Storm Spirit's main ability is it has to do with being able to tie people down and also his escapes and moving very quickly. Bloodseeker's ultimate is the perfect counter for that. Mm -hmm. I guess what I was saying earlier is, you know, a lot of Kunkka's wow. abilities revolve around uh, skill shots, which our friends can't do. <laughs> <laughs> what a comeback here from the Radiant. They're really taking these battles the way that they should be. Absolutely. You can't give up too early. You get a lot of people, especially on uh, on US East, who are just pieces <laughs> of shit who want to call GG after first blood. You can't do that. You saw uh, Radiant was down two towers and how many kills? Almost four or five kills. And there. So Nature's Prophet is dead. Bringing it right back. There's the Dagon. That little what zap was Dagon. That is an item, not an ability. <laughs> Yeah, 400 burst damage at this at this rate Radiant's with the shuriken, which has a random chance to or it has a it will crit after his invisibility with 325 it damage. It's just it's immense. It is an immense amount of damage for anyone to be taking, especially Nature's Prophet. And he's gonna be a prime target for that bounty hunter, holding like down a, those pushes. Dyer wants to make their move here. Death Prophet surely has an ult. That's when they're gonna want to push. Can Radiant come around and make something happen? I think they're too spread out to save this tower. I don't know if they should have wasted a fortify on this. Because it's hole is definitely up. gonna go down. Black hole would be perfect here if Enigma gets in there and pulls it off. Do we see a blink dagger on her? I can't tell because I can't click on it. No, we don't. Her. The only thing Enigma has right now is soaring and boots. I think she had a lot of trouble farming in the jungle. Yeah, they gave her a hard time and they just don't have the team. All right, well, the enemy team just really does not support jungler as well. Well, I have to say, both enemy sides have a, both side had both sides have an enemy jungler, and both mids, both Stormsbird and Zeus, were ruthless against both of them. Neither yeah. side's jungler has really made much progress at all. Yeah, yeah, and they've got great counters with Bloodseeker's Lust. Or, 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 I don't even remember what it's called. I think it's Lust, right? Thirst. Thirst. Okay, thirst, and then and just Storm Spirit's ability to be anywhere on the map at any time. Pretty it's just much, yeah. Destroying them. And here we go again. Dire just completely balled up. I know that Radiant's team can see them. If they need to get Enigma in there. Oh. This is, did we get another pickoff from Bounty Hunter? Nature's Prophet is Nature's down. Prophet again. The big thing is, is if we could see Enigma Black Hole right here, and I, I, I can we see it? This is it. Get in there. Get in there, Big Jeff. The Jeffy. ability to follow up, though. I mean, they need to have that Witch Doctor ready at the trigger. I agree. Get in there right now. This is it. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Here comes the boat. It's going to hit. Oh, boy. Ooh, it's one. Barely got Blood Seeker. Still good. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Storm Spirit comes in and cleans up Bloodseeker. Oh boy, here comes the big black hole. And there's the black hole. Two man and it's dead. Excellent. And it's dead. <laughs> that was just cruel by the boyfriend of the black hole. <laughs> Ringer. And there 
go to. So Dyer bringing it back just a little bit. Still only up three kills. What Radiant really needs to focus on is taking one of these side towers because they're relatively undefended. Also, no damage on any of them either. That's a, that's kind of a big deal. And uh, Radiant needs to push their lanes out quite a bit. I actually just got a Steam message uh, from Isha Boy who let me know that Storm Spirit is not affected by Bloodseeker's ult when he's in his, uh, his little zip-zop ball thing. <laughs> hey, you know... You know, that zips up ball thing. <laughs> so to me, that actually means Storm Spirit would be one of the best counters for Bloodseeker for that reason. Not not the opposite. Boy, did I fuck that up. God, <laughs> my face is so red right now. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about ending my career as a uh, amateur commentator for my friend's games. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But Brett, my my huge gentleman's forty to fifty number of audiences would be really disappointed. <laughs> I mean, you, you say we're co-broadcasters, but you know I do all the work. Come on, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I gotta say, I'm really hoping to see a blink dagger on Enigma. She's fine. Uh, yeah. she, she needs to farm this jungle. She's trying, and she yep. needs that money. She's saving up, but she's dying too much. Oh, Pugna's gonna catch her out here. Oh, and Storm Spirit's gonna put the disable on her. She's oh, oh my goodness. That is not a position you want to be in with no friendly creeps. Absolutely not. Illusion rune bottom. Really interesting thing to know about the illusion rune. There's really not. This is just nothing... Oh, Nothing Dyer's much. pushing hard. The thing about Dyer here is I think they know they need to win fast because Radiant's got a decent Radiant's amount of late game on their team. Yeah, that Enigma could get scary. The Bounty Hunter is getting scary. The bounty Hunter, <laughs> scary, Witch there. Doctor, Zeus. All scary late game players. Well, maybe not Zeus so much, but they know that they need oh, to push. Wow, that does an immense amount of damage, and they are completely back in this. And that's it. That death push that they just tried is completely over. With the Death Prophet ultimate down, Zeus just totally brought him back. That burst damage is really saving them with their squishy lineup on the that dire. huge, and you know, I have to say, in my opinion, this is the point of the game where Zeus really, really shines. This mid-game part where he gets that level 2 on his ultimate, does a huge amount of damage, and it's right around the level when the rest of the, when the other team doesn't have the levels or the hit points to really deal with it as best they could later in the game. Mm-hmm. This is their chance. They really need to be taking these towers. I don't know why they're so they're split they're split pushing. I think this bounty hunter just wants this extra feed. Um, yeah. I really think he would be better helping to push the tower, though. It's hard to say. Yeah, I think I think he may have been trying to counter the nature's prophet who was just up there, but now he's farming in the radiant jungle. Yeah, bounty doing a really yeah. good job against that uh, against that nature's prophet this whole game. Yeah, and I think if that if he just keeps that as his career, oh, we could see a big bow. Oh, it's oh, this is gonna be way on the trigger. But it still looks like it's going to be a very good fight by the Dire side. Absolutely. I don't think that Witch Doctor is going to make it. I don't think that Bloodseeker is going to make it. Oh, yeah. Bloodseeker gets taken out by Pugna. He's got a really long range on that life drain. Still have a black hole up. Really waiting to see that happen. I think she, she doesn't really want to get in there until she has a Blink Dagger, but I think she needs to risk it. She needs to just jump and just walk right in and use it in the middle of those team engagements. Yep. The problem is that Dyer has a lot of uh, a lot of stuns, and by a lot, I mean uh, one, two. They have two big stuns, but it will stop her from channeling. So she needs to make sure she gets Kunkka and uh, Storm Spirit both. Mm -hmm. And I believe actually that um, Necrophos's Decrepify would stop a channel as well, but I could be wrong. No. I, don't know. I have check. no idea. It doesn't say it in the tooltip. I'd be interested to know. Gradient Maybe we should ask them. To do this. <laughs> Hey Jess, so channel, <laughs> channel your ult, and then we'll see if um, that. We'll see, we'll see. You know. Yeah, and then we'll get we'll uh, Browner we'll to get, come over. Get the thing and the thing. The thing and the thing. So I want to point out, this game, it seems like it's heavily in Dyer's favor, but I really don't think it is. Radiant's only down three kills. That Bounty Hunter, that Zeus, they can really turn this around really, mm -hmm. really quick, especially in those Radiant's team battles. They already showed they can make a, a solid team wipe. I mean, the Kunkka, I'm not sure what the Kunkka's building, because like, I'm unable to click on it because of my computer. I'll check in a second. I'm kind of interested to see yeah. if anything's going to happen here. Oh, boy, this is an intense Bounty team fight. Bounty yeah. Hunter in for the burst damage. Oh, my goodness. Wow, Bounty Hunter one-shots oh, Pugna. Oh, wow, we've got Storm Spirit just hanging out in the back. Nobody's even paying attention to him. Oh, my goodness. It's oh, going crazy. Storm Spirit, though, can get away from his ult very easily. And Bounty Hunter's going to claim up Storm Spirit. Tonka does have a Shadow Blade, Urn of Shadows, Phase Boots, and Missile. Oh. 
That Kunkka is absolutely gone. Oh, there comes the Panic Ultimate from the Death Prophet. That's is... actually excellent. You want to bait that away from towers. You don't want to yep. be pushing with that. Now the yep. cooldown is done. Bounty Hunter's and turn. And there he goes. Huge engagement again. Radiant showing that they can play defensive when they need to. Yep. They need to push those towers down, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like you said, it does look like it's heavily in the Dyer's favor, especially with the towers, but I mean... That's the, that's the second or third time they've tried to push on the high ground, and they just cannot do it. Yep. I think, uh, again, I think Radiant needs to really regain some momentum here before Zeus's mid-game utility runs out, and it absolutely will, unless they make something, like, really Dyer's happen here soon, because attacked. then Bloodseeker and Bounty Hunter both can really Dyer's take this game over. Tower has been destroyed. So let's take a look at what the, uh, what the Kunkka's plan is. So he's got something, some items. I think his next item is probably going to be Daedalus. He did buy some dust specifically for yeah. Bounty Hunter. That's very important. If you can catch Bounty Hunter before he jumps you, that would be really helpful. Not to mention that um, Nature's Prophet, well, Nature's Prophet's on his team, never mind, <laughs> <laughs> has a Shadow Blade. We have two Shadow Blades, one on Kunkka and one on Nature's Prophet. I think the Radiant should be carrying dust as well. Yeah. And are they? Who knows? Well, the Probably. thing is, Bloodseeker, assuming he's alive, can see them when they when they if they use it to escape, they're below 25% health. They can be seen. Oh, big coconut there! Very good coconut. Oh my goodness! And the maledict as well, just gonna do some damage over time according to how much damage was done to him. Really well played. But is it gonna do anything? Probably not. Well, they did get Zeus out of that engagement. Was Zeus yeah. up here? I'm not sure where Zeus just died. I'm not sure where Zeus is. I wasn't paying attention to Zeus. All right, Looks Enigma. Like Enigma, maybe. show us some black holes. There are three up there. You, th these three players, Witch Doctor. Ooh, big pick off at bottom, and boom. Yeah, that bounty hunter's getting real scary, especially with that Dagon. He's got a level three yeah. already. Didn't even need it for that. That was impressive. Absolutely. That's what's keeping them in this game, are those types of pickoffs. I mean, obviously, yep. they're winning these big team engagements, which is very, very important, and it's stopping the pushes from the dire side, but those pickoffs are what's keeping them also fed and mm -hmm. getting enough money to win those team engagements later. Yep. I mean, their team is heavy on ganking. I just I just don't know if Death Prophet's ultimate's enough for the push. I mean, you just saw three of them chase through the ultimate. Oh, and I... Oh, huge. this is a oh. big boat. Oh, this could be a big black hole, though. Big black hole. Cast it. Oh, man. That Enigma just needs to cast that black hole. It will disable all four of them, and, the, and she cannot be stopped. Yeah, with that Death Prophet ult up, though, it could be in trouble. That's true. The Death Prophet ult will still continue going. Uh, I think they might be able to make that push. Uh, we might. We, we can't see any buybacks out from the. Uh, That's big. This is big. Corrin. And dust the Aunt got, dust. like, just going to fall. Oh, wow. Huge all from Zeus. Wow, big team battle Save there. Push. Zeus is chasing, chasing. Ooh. What's there? Playable. There is a regen rune up here, which is very, very important considering how low the dire team got in that engagement. It's too bad uh, the Nature's Prophet didn't go for it, or they don't have Radiant's any. They don't have any wards on the map. There's only siege. one ward on this entire map. Can you imagine how much that would help Dire if they could tell if Radiant wasn't in their base, they could push mid a lot easier. Yep. It's a shame. <laughs> on this map. <laughs> well, me cry a little, you know? we do have gobbles on support. Obviously, never going to buy wards. He's got one in his inventory. We're still waiting to see that get put down. Yeah, he, pr he prides himself on it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Might be seeing a Roche here. Uh, I think so. Almost Apollo is uh, is one to be keen on going Roche, though I do know... flirting uh, with it. But, I don't know. It doesn't look... Doesn't look promising. There is no vision, but they, uh, the Radiant may be suspecting it. Again, ward's really important, especially if you're going to go Roche. You want to put probably an Observer Ward here, maybe here, and get a Sentry right here in the middle, because what will, what you can do is it can spot if the other team has Observer Wards. So not only are you able to have vision if the team is coming in to kill you, but you can deward them so they can't see you going into Roshan. Yeah. It's very powerful, the power of the Sentry Ward. <laughs> and, I mean, they've got a bunch of invis, so... Exactly. It really doesn't hurt. You'd be able to see someone that's invis trying to sneak into Roshan. You know, it, it, it hurts nobody. Absolutely. Bounty Hunter might be running in there. I don't think Bounty Hunter could solo Roche, but... Because uh... he's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what, we, what would be interesting to see is if a team smoked up. We don't really see much smoking up going on at these levels, but if we saw that, a team could walk right into Roche. I guarantee if one team did that, the other team would have no idea. Yep. Oh, wow. We've got Enigma hiding in the bushes, waiting for the initiation. Is there a blink on her? Yes, she oh. does have blink. Big black hole coming in now. Yes, black hole. Wow. Huge. 
Big engagement right there, taking down two of the Dire Sides. Three of the Dire Side. Enigma going down, but making it completely worth it. And of course, Storm Spirit gets away because that's what Storm Spirit is best at. Radiance Very huge initiation. That's exactly what I've been waiting to see from Enigma this whole game. And now, Radiant Side is getting the momentum that they need. They can't get Rax down here. Bounty Hunter cleaning up these creeps. <laughs> the Black Hole. So yeah, I think what Radiant right now needs to do is focus on um, consolidating what they have, not losing their momentum, pushing their lanes out a little bit, taking a deep breath, and... Pushing a lane, they need to take a tier two or at least this tier one. Absolutely, get that gold to catch back up. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the the edge that it, the extra gold would give them is just that's what they need. You know, they're they're winning in kills now, and I mean the gold graph. Let's just take a look at that. It's it's heading it's heading their direction, but you know it's still heavily in the favor of the dire. Absolutely. So we'll see if they can pull it back. The thing about the gold on the dire side is how many heroes on the dire side are really that dependent on money? Because I would yeah. argue Pugna, or two maybe. Pugna, Storm Spirit, Death Prophet are much more ability dependent heroes. Yeah. So money on them is not nearly oh. as important as money is on uh, on Bounty Hunter who just picked off someone else. He's running into groups of two and three, picking someone off and getting out. It's it's absolutely incredible. He might go for this Death Prophet. No, he's gonna go for Storm Spirit instead. Storm Spirit gonna probably oh, escape because he's an asshole. Whoa! And the Zeusol comes out of nowhere. Wow. That was an excellent gank. Zeus was on the lookout thinking Bounty Hunter wasn't gonna get it, was able to use his ult to finish him up. So lame. <laughs> Global. This actually, I think, is a really good move on Radiant. They are split pushing, though. I think Enigma should be with the group of three in case they need a black hole. Black hole down for another Boom. Oh, minute. Think this was premeditated. Good pickoff by Bounty Hunter. That's I honestly, that's what if I could name this game, it would be good pickoff by Bounty Hunter because that honestly is what's keeping them in this game. Absolutely. The pickoffs by Bounty are Radiant's seriously keeping them, and it's counter pushing with Nature Profit. It's keeping them in team fights. It's picking off the people that are running away from the team fights that they may have just won. It's it's crazy. He's really just carrying this team to victory. <laughs> Absolutely, 17 and one bounty hunter. And now that we have that Enigma with the blink, it's it's getting absolutely crazy wild for that team. Yeah. I'm interested to see what's on Zeus. Zeus looks like he's building, um, I think he's making his Refresher Orb. That's going to be really huge on him, allowing him to cast his ultimate Dyer's twice. Bounty, bounty Hunter, Sanjanyasha, pretty standard. Looks like he's going for a BKB next. I'm not sure how I feel about a BKB against this team. It would be very helpful to avoid Storm Spirit's ult, though. Not uh -huh. ultimate, but his disable. Who's it going on? I'm sorry. I missed that. Uh, Bloodseeker is making a BKB. Interesting. Not but, the choice I would make. I know. But let's talk, I mean, this Bounty Hunter, level 24 almost, just about level 24 with a Desolator, a level 5 Dagon, oh, phase boots, and a Demon Edge. I don't know what he's doing with that Demon Edge, but he may okay. be twice. making a, a Daedalus or an MKB. Oh, no. wow. Beautiful play from from everyone there. I mean, the, not by the Witch Doctor, who was just standing there and let it happen. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> By everybody else, that that was really well coordinated. And Absolutely. Any pickoff you can get on Storm Spirit is a good pickoff because he has some of the best escapes in the game, allowing him to get away from pretty much anything. If you can manage to pick him off, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that just be having Storm Spirit dead at all gives you a lot more map presence that allows you to move around and not be afraid of Storm Spirit coming out of fucking nowhere and killing you. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a trouble. Dire it's looking like they want to renew their push bomb, take out this last T2. Oh boy, this this could mean trouble. Yeah, I mean, Bounty they, Hunter not quite close enough for where he needs to be to help in this team engagement. Get ults on everyone. Ults on the Death Prophet, ults on the almost Apollo. Radiant's I mean, bottom tower is under siege. looks like they're going to be giving this away for free or maybe going for the big black hole. I think this, this is it. I think this, get in there. You got a blink. Oh, uh, missing on the, the black hole except for Oh, well, Pugna. except you got Pugna. That's a pretty good pick off. Pugna's oh. well. Wow, Bounty Hunter. And it was not for not. Shop. It was not for not. The black hole distracted them and it kept them in that. This is an excellent game only because the, the Dyer had such a huge lead. And honestly, I think this Bounty Hunter can bring this back almost by himself yeah. at this point. I don't want to discount his whole team. They're obviously supporting him and getting him easier kills, but he is 19 and 1. He really could push these towers himself at this point and not be too afraid of getting killed. Especially with the Desolator, which will take 7 armor off of it. Absolutely. 
But I mean, the the tower game, the Nature's Prophet's doing a pretty, pretty solid job of just keeping the lanes pushed out and not really letting them push either. Yes, you know, and that's that's his whole job. That's his, that's yeah. his entire purpose. Is Nature's Prophet has done a great job of pushing out the side lanes as best he can, and Radiant has to constantly be falling back to push their lanes out. Looks like Bounty Hunter was looking for a uh, pick off, but then just decided to TP out. Bounty Hunter constantly being the one going back to farm and uh, and push out the lanes. What I think Radiant should be doing is getting um, probably Bloodseeker, because I think Bloodseeker could use the most farm at this point. Have him getting TPs or even Boots of Travel to be the one going home and pushing these lanes out. So that uh, Bounty Hunter can constantly be roaming, constantly getting these pickoffs, because that's what's keeping them in this game. Exactly. Oh, very choice positioning by Bloodseeker. We could be seeing a really easy pickoff, but he decided against it. You know, I just realized that uh, Radiant has come back uh, with five kills ahead now. So I think yeah. it's Dyer are the ones who need to regain their momentum if they want to bring this back. I mean, they took out T3, not able to take those racks, though. Yeah, I mean, I think I think their best option right now is to just avoid fights altogether. Travel is four, let the Nature's Prophet put pressure on a barrack, and I mean, just, just see what you can do. You know, sustain the fight. I mean, I don't even think they should try to go for kills. Just see if you can get the ultimates on cooldown on the opposite team, see if you can distract them and let the nature's prophet do his thing i agree really, uh, what else are they going to do i mean at this point that bounty hunter is just everywhere and a killing machine right that bounty hunter can one-on-one -on -one every single one on their team he just killed he just killed two members this is how yes. they need oh, to kill bounty and he's dead. really big kill really yeah, big kill to though storm, to the storm spirit as well that's a huge gold advantage right storm spirit having an orchid and a lincoln sphere um, one that silences the enemy and one that absorbs uh, an enemy magic attack, which I don't know if that works on anything Bounty Hunter has, but... I, be I believe it should work on the Shuriken, which it's it's any targeted spell. Oh, wow. Oh, Whoa! Zeus coming in with the follow-up. Zeus having his, uh, his ultimate, or his, uh... Is he gonna ultimate? Does he have enough mana for it? Oh, he's silenced. Very interesting. Boom! Oh, he uses it again. Oh, my goodness. The Lincolns! Lincoln's! Wow. Lincoln saving that Storm Spirit, but just not quite long enough for Zeus to finish him up. This is a slugging match, this game. Yeah, this is just very violent. I'm tempted to turn my eyes away because I just, I'm not sure if I can take it anymore, Chet. <laughs> I'm, uh, I have to say, I still would place this in the Radiance advantage um, now. For about the past five minutes, I'd say the Radiant has a huge advantage only because of Bounty Hunter, and the, I think the only way that uh, Dyer can, can really make a move here is they should group up, they should push, they need to stop farming independently, they need to group up, they need to specifically disable Bounty Hunter. And uh, I think if Witch Doctor throws his coconut onto Enigma, as long as she can't black hole, I think they can win that team engagement very easily. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, 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 it's disabling that Bounty Hunter who does huge burst damage, absolutely huge. They need sentry wards and dust, and nobody on their team has those things. What a shame. Well, I take that back. Um, we did actually see a pickoff on Bounty Hunter because almost Apollo carried dust, but uh, we don't see it really. We see it on uh, Death Prophet. I'm eating my own words. But will they use it when they need to is the Ew, question. Don't eat your own word. Dude, that's disgusting. <laughs> You're an animal. I'm so sorry. Eating words is gross. Get those words out of your mouth. I think I think getting sentry wards from the supports would be more helpful than dust. Dust is better when you're chasing someone. Wards are better to preemptively stop an attack from someone like Bounty Hunter, Ricky, exactly. or Nick's Assassin. Yeah, you, you know, I don't think you need dust against a uh, Bounty Hunter because the minute you see him, you're dead. Absolutely. So you, I think that really sentry wards just need to be placed by their number five, which by that I mean like the lowest priority of farm. <laughs> Just need to be everywhere. That's all you should be buying now for the rest of the game. Oh, geez. Let's see if this bounty hunter can kill pretty much this whole team. I honestly think he's he got a shot. Silenced. The dust goes out, and it hits him as he's, well. He's dusted. The team is not chasing them. They, they need sentry wards. They're just going to lose their teammates. Just one by one. Did you see their whole team was there, just not quite close enough? Bounty hunter can two-shot, one, two-shot those supports. Yeah. Really getting the... Yeah. Really uh, increasing the the team advantage to to say the the bounty hunter is over half of his team's kills right now. That's why I say if I think if you take him out of the battle, the rest of the radiant side really can't do much. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the net worth. Yeah, bounty hunter and Zeus at the top with nature's profit being the top on the dire. It's actually pretty surprising to see that. And here comes the next pick off. I think an Orchid would benefit this Bounty Hunter a lot. Being able to silence the targets like Storm Spirit that would just be able to escape, well, no. never mind. Well, he did just <laughs> kill him, like, immediately. 
Oh, nice oh, Bloodstone. Yeah, yeah. Very good time, Bloodstone. Bloodstone is an item that allows you to commit suicide, denying the enemy team from getting gold from your death and also decreasing your spawn time. It's a really interesting item. There are so many different buffs to it. It's very complicated. Absolutely. You know what might actually help uh, die your side? Just like last game, you should get Ghost Scepters. You need something, something to stop you from getting instantly killed by that Bounty Hunter. Though I have to say, like in someone like Pugna's case, or Nature's Prophet case, you might get one shot, so a Ghost Scepter will not save you. But this, this yeah, is that... absolutely brutal. I don't know what they can do against this Bounty Hunter right now, unless they get a Sheep Stick. Yeah, the Shuriken actually is what does most of the damage and mini stuns and it's magical and so is the Dagon so I mean yes. I don't think Ghost would be the best option well yeah he has huge magical and physical damage he can pretty much do anything versatile that he needs yeah, he can do anything he wants <laughs> and here comes uh, Radiant's big counter push they really I mean they took down that T2 they're gonna bring the tower push back the only advantage Dyer had was the towers and I think they squandered it they should have been pushing more yep they should have just teamed up with that nature's profit and just death push. I mean, they did lose two big team engagements when they pushed T3, which I think frightened them. But I think all they, what they should have done instead was bring one sentry ward with them. That's all they needed. They yep. needed one sentry ward, and they needed to be prepared to stun Enigma. That's all, yep. and they would have won those team engagements. And now it's too late. I think I think Radiance uh, carries are way too fed. Boy. Got Bloodseeker coming in from behind. Silencing Pugna, really good choice. Really good choice. Pugna going to kill himself. OK. <laughs> Pugna killing himself to uh, Bloodseeker's ultimate when all he had to do was stand still. Oh boy. Uh, I'm a little confused as why Death Prophet chose to pop his ult there. Here it comes. Wow. It was more defensive, but boy, that. This is too far gone. There's yeah, just. That Bloodseeker. Uh, this is just a complete massacre. Well, until. Unless Dyer. I think I think there's just communication lapses because they're not disabling who they need to disable when they're not engaging together. It's just and there goes going the call. And, and they call the GG. GG, and that's the end of the game. There's really not much you can do against that fed bloodseeker. But you know what? Maybe bounty uh, hunter. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a bounty hunter. Sorry. But a valiant effort, really good early game, but unfortunately they just couldn't take their advantage and reap the benefits of it. Absolutely. Dyer had a huge advantage by getting... I mean, they, they kept that bounty hunter down, and I really can't pinpoint the moment when he spun crazy out of control, but... It was wild. <laughs> it was a <laughs> wild a one. Roller coaster wild ride together, uh, Brett and Justin. And it took I'm us up and down the steep slopes, and... Oh, I'm glad to ride roller coasters and loops doops with you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hell yeah.